If you have difficulties in realizing a partimento at the keyboard, watch this video to the end. In this video, we're gonna realize a partimento and I show you all the elements you have to consider for a good and perfect realization of a partimento, like an old master. Before starting, I welcome you to this video. I'm Ricardo Samusicus Practicus and here on the web I share with you all my knowledge and a lot of things about uh, the music, about uh, partimento, composition, white man's notation and all what we, I and you want. If you like this kind of content and if you want to support my activity here on the web, you can do it on my Patreon. But now don't talk anymore and let's go to the keyboard for our partimento, the first partimento from Durante's Partimenti Diminuiti. Okay. The first thing you should do is playing the bass alone. And while you are playing the bass, consider and pay attention where the bass goes. In the, um, for example, modulations, for example, for example, figuration, and all of the aspects that are very important for our realization. So, first question, what's the key? A major, you see only two sharps in the key, but this is a tradition to write one less flat or sharp that comes from modal system. So we are in A major. As we can see, the first arpeggio is A major and the last note is A. So let's play this bass and let's uh, understand all its movements. to the fifth degree. Another cadence to E major, the fifth degree. Cadence to D major, the fourth degree of A major. to B minor, the second degree of A major. And then cadence to A major, that is the first degree. These two cadences together make a schemata that is called fonte, because the second is repeated one tone lower. A fonte with the others Galan Schemata is very important for um, realizing partimentos with the mind of old masters. I will talk about fonte in other videos. So let's go on. We have a cadence to A major. similar movements and the final cadence to A major. So now what we have to do? As we can see Durante gives us a rule. What's a rule? A rule is a melodic possibility we can use, we can play with the right hand upon for example some uh, movement of the bass. As we can see Durante writes three possibilities for the semitone movement. It means that when we have a semitone movement to the up, we can play one of the three rules. This is the first. That is an arpeggio and a descending little scale. Then the second rule that is a descending scale. And the third rule is diminishing the bass. 
for this exercise I'll choose the first rule. It means that every time I, I meet a passage like that, I try to apply this rule. So let's highlight all these passages. The first. Then we have another one. Then we have the same passage in E major. And then to D major. And then to D minor, because this repeated note is like that. So another time to A major. Another time to A major. So another time in D major. Another time in D major. And then we have another time in A major. Okay, now the second element we see in this uh, part event is the cadence, this cadence. This cadence is like the gallant cadence because we have a 4-6 chord followed by a 3 and 5 chord. So, the first cadence to A major, the next one to E major, then another to E major, another to D major, another to B minor, and then the last one to A major. Okay, now let's try to harmonize this partiment with these elements. The next step we can add in our realization is use a figuration also in all the passages that are not the rule. Let's try an example. In this way I'm staying in the harmony, in the understanding harmony, but I'm playing something new. Four and six chords, three and five chords. So let's recap the first phrase. How to do that? Think the understanding harmony. Try to invent to write new melodies. What you want, stay in the harmony. Okay, we can go on. Now, 
the same in E major. Okay, now we are in B minor and we can do the same. The trick is what's the understanding harmony? So let's add a figuration, for example. we have two chords that are not moving like in this point we can uh, take the rest with the right hand or we can maybe do some other for example okay now I like finish this partiment with this movement. The harmony is D major, 6 chord, A major, 6 with the sharp, A major chord, and 6 chord. And in this case I apply the second rule. And then I repeat the same in A major. So. A major, 6th, 6th with the sharp, and E major. And then applying figuration. And this way. Now let's listen to a possible realization of this partimento. Wonderful. Let's recap now the five elements you should consider for a correct realization of a partimento. The first is the key. Ask you before you start playing and harmonize a partimento. What's the key of this partimento, of this bass? The second is modulations. What keys does this partimento modulate to? This is really important because if we have a figure, a pattern, and we have to transpose this pattern in the other keys, we must know which are these keys. The third element is the figuration of the bass. If we don't have a rule, we should choose an element, a figuration like a rule, from the bass, for example. And the figuration of the bass is important because some passages can be diminished or with other notes, and we must recognize them. So we have to pay real attention for recognizing, for example, a movement in the bass that we can uh, meet diminished in another point. The fourth is the rule. If we have a rule, we should use it. Or we can invent another rule. But if we have a rule, we should apply this rule according to the indications of the composer of this partiment. And the fifth is the melodic harmonic patterns. There are a lot of harmonic and melodic patterns that an improviser at the keyboard must know. In this way you can apply these patterns to every, to every partimentus and then you will be able someday 
to play, to harmonize a partimento at the first time you read it. And about harmonic and melodic pattern you can find on my Patreon new patterns for practicing at the keyboard every week. These videos will help you to improve from week to week your abilities of improvising with pattern in baroque style. With simple, short, fun exercises you can practice through all the keys, major or minor. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it has been useful for you. To keep updated on all the videos, subscribe this channel and activate the bell. Leave me your gamma out and see you in the next video. Bye!